This program contains seven short video clips on the theme of children in World War II. You can download the clips along with teacher resources and other lesson starters at teachers.tv. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Marion Newland was evacuated from her home in London. She was just seven years old. We were sent to a hall where people came to pick us. I was standing there in the line, very miserable, and Mrs Powell picked me, who was the billeting officer. And I was taken back to her house, and she said, well, before you come in, we've got a dog. Now, I hadn't been used to a dog, so she said, but if you give him a piece of chocolate, then he will be your friend for life. So gingerly, I put out the piece of chocolate and Rex took it. And after that, we were the best of pals. Now I seemed as though I had a sister and mother had a little daughter and uh, we settled down very well together. Mother used to take her shopping. She was lovely. I used to sit on her lap and she'd give me a cuddle and she used to say, you're too affectionate, but perhaps that's what I was craving for from being away from home. I can remember crying in bed and crying for my nanny and my granddad and my mum and dad. I had to, to leave and I was called up into the Royal Signals. I think it helped Mother to have Mary in there, because um, Mother had someone else there to comfort her and be comforted by. Mm -hmm. 
we are in the preliminary stage of one of the greatest battles in history. We were just exuberant, because we thought it was fun. You know, lights going off, aircraft going over, and little big bangs suddenly. To boys, that's fun. And if you're born into it, that's all you know. We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many long months of struggle and of suffering. At school, they, they did a gas mask prestige, yes. You used to go, right, put your gas mask on, da -da -da, and then they keep you on there for a couple of minutes, then take your gas mask off, put them in the box, and you put them in the box. And then, of course, there was the, uh, the air raid shelters. You rang the bell and the children all lined up in their different forms. Inside the shelters, we were rather crowded, but there was a, certainly a sense of excitement about it. And we did pride ourselves in getting there in record time. We did a bit of work. You could sort of recite tables and do a bit of mental arithmetic and things like that. But often it was singing, you know. Oh, it's a real one. Ah, child size. Oh, I remember that smell. Oh, oh God, that brings it back. That, that smell. Smell of rubber. Violet Uphill lived with her two brothers and her sister Primrose in a village that seemed a world away from the horrors of the Blitz. Then one day, Primrose became anxious. At tea time, she said to my mother, Mummy, I'm not going to bed tonight. And my mother said, What do you mean you're not going to bed tonight? No, I'm not going to bed tonight. She said, Jerry's going to bomb us. My mother said, Don't be silly like you do. But she kept on and on all evening. And then my mother said to her, "What well, for tonight, you go into Jeff and Reggie's bedroom and I'll have Violet in with me. But tomorrow, she said, we'll put all the beds into our bedroom. She said, then we'll all be together. But of course, tomorrow never came. Not for them. Bombs hit us. My mother and I never had a scratch on us. Not a scratch. 
Jeffrey was killed instantly, and then Reggie, he was killed instantly. They got Primrose up, but as soon as they got her into the ambulance, she was dead. My mother had the three of them buried together. She wouldn't have them separated. And, um, and that's silly. Um, anyway, as she had them buried together, of course, everybody in the village turned out. I can't go on. I do sometimes wonder what my life would have been like if I'd had brothers and sisters. It's just... You've had an awful experience, but you just get on with life, don't you? You know, that's how I look at it anyway. The British Air Force bombed lots of German cities, including Stuttgart, where Wolfgang and Rainer Fritz lived. Amazingly, their father filmed the destruction of their hometown. Today, when I look at the films my father made during the war, I'm often surprised to see how bad things look. Because the memories I have from my childhood aren't that bad at all. My mother made every effort to keep these anxieties as far away from us children as possible. I can remember the sound of the sirens very clearly. We'd be pulled out of our sleep and we'd run to the shelter. There were other children there who we could play with, and in one sense, astonishingly, the memory of it isn't that terrible. In the morning, when we came out of the air raid shelter, almost everything was on fire or destroyed. The really bad memory I have is of our home, when it was destroyed. When we came into the flat, all we could see in front of us was rubble. When I see it now, I think how afraid my parents must have been for us. They had to make sure we survived everything. It's amazing to think how they managed to get through it all. It's something we can hardly imagine today.